Hey there everyone, welcome back to Godly Dragon Reviews. I know it's been a very long time since I've done a review, but I appreciate you all for being very patient. I've been on hiatus on video making for a while due to a lot of tough times in life, and I've also been taking a break to produce music, link in the description below. I've made several EPs and also a few albums, and my artist name is Den of Dragons. So if you want to listen to some good Christian music, check out my SoundCloud. And I am also on major streaming services like Spotify. Anyway, today I am going to review the new Dungeons & Dragons movie that came out at the end of March. I saw it in theaters, but now that it's on Paramount+, Plus, I think now is a good time to review it. First, some background. This movie is based on the worldwide phenomenon known as Dungeons & Dragons, a fantasy role-playing game invented back in the 80s during the Satanic Panic. This game is controversial among Christians for its setting, its themes, and its elements. I personally think it's just a silly fantasy game, but I know some Christians might really disagree with me. That's a topic for another day. First, let's talk about the plot of the movie. The movie's main character is a bard named Edgin, who belongs to an order of knights called the Harpers, who protect the community from a demonic cult known as the Red Wizards. After he takes an item from a Red Wizard's treasure hoard, he returns home to find his wife murdered, but that thankfully his baby is still alive. Years later, he forms a team of thieves to steal a treasure known as the Tablet of Reawakening, which can resurrect a dead person only one time. The team consists of Edgin, his daughter Kira, Hoga, a female warrior who was banished from her tribe for marrying a man from another tribe, a wizard named Simon, and a con man named Forge. As it turns out, Forge betrays the team, resulting in the imprisonment of Edgin and Hoga. Two years later, they learn that Forge has imprisoned the Lord of Neverwinter, so that Forge can rule that land, and they also learn that Forge has the Tablet of Reawakening in a magic vault, and that Edgin's daughter Kira has been kidnapped by him. So they form a new team of anti-heroes, consisting of Egan, Hoga, Simon, and a tiefling shapeshifter known as Doric. Together, they embark on a quest to find the Tablet of Reawakening, and learn a lot of redemptive lessons along the way. The positive part of this movie is that the overall worldview is moral and redemptive. The main character is encouraged to return to the noble and pure path he used to be on before he became a thief and the goal of the main characters is to restore the kingdom of Neverwinter to its rightful ruler to save all of its citizens. There are however several scenes that involve magic, including a strange scene where necromancy is used to bring dead bodies back to life to ask them 5 questions to gain vital information. This scene was mostly just weird and only for comedic purposes, not to mention creepy. Some Christians may see the use of magic in this film as a big detriment. However, this is to be expected from a fantasy property like Dungeons and Dragons. There are also a lot of intense scenes with lots of action and monsters, which may be too much for young children as the film is rated PG-13. Overall, at its core, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Themes is a fun fantasy popcorn flick featuring good versus evil and anti-heroes redeeming themselves. However, there is still some objectionable content as well. At the end of the day, whether or not to watch this film as a Christian is a matter of conscience. I really enjoyed this film, but some might not. The important thing is to analyze it for yourself and make a decision from there while also trying to understand the other side. God bless everyone. 